How y'all doing? Uh, for this review, I'm going to go over a classic, and that is not a classic in Sword of Sorcerer or everything, but a classic in horror, and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. You know, we know Dracula, I know Dracula, you know Dracula, it's through various um, means of uh, various mediums, and uh, I figured well, let's go to original source. This is one of those books that's been on my shelf for a number of years, and I finally got, re got around to reading it, so let's look into it. So I'm probably not going to give uh, to exact details of, um, of the story as I can, but uh, I'll try and give you to the main story beats, but without giving again too much detail. We're the story is set up through um, through chapters, yes, but it's sectioned off in chronological order through journals, diaries, and uh, phonograph readings of the characters um, in the events that happen, telling what all has happened with Dracula. So we start off with Jonathan Harker, who's an executor from England, traveling to. Um, Transylvania to Dracula's castle, who's going to set up a, a states for Dracula there, particularly in Carfax Abbey, um, ruin home, you know, church and all that. Now, uh, as Harker sets up the estates, he's given hospitality by Dracula. The longer he stays, um, he starts noticing weird things going around here. Um, he starts to notice that uh, uh, you know, Dracula is climbing down the tower, um, you know, where he. You know, he Kind of points out to Harker that this is his room for the evening. It's actually just, it's not his room because after he, you know, Harker goes to sleep at night or in the morning, he, you know, climbs downward. He finds out that Dracula is sleeping in the lower chambers of his castle. He's, uh, oh, um, that's just one of them. Yeah. And eventually he is visited by three beautiful women who Dracula backs off when they try to uh, seduce him in a sense. Now, Harker later finds out he's a prisoner. And his journal entry sort of cut off in his moment of despair to be introduced by other the other characters of the story. We're introduced to Mina, um, who is betrothed and later married to Harker. Her best friend Lucy, who's this beautiful her, her beautiful rich friend, who um, we're through proposals were introduced to his uh, three other characters. Um, all of them tried to propose for Lucy in her hand of marriage. Dr. Seward, who is a man, who is a, a doctor who runs a mental in, um, institution you know, nearby. He is a, um, and also Quincy Morris, who's a Texas tra a Texan traveling abroad with his um, friend Arthur Holmwood, who he also proposes to Lucy. So, um, but Lucy accepts Arthur Holmwood, who's, uh, Arthur Holmwood's a rich lord and everything. So, here, and the thing is that Lucy's a very sweet and you know and all the men are noble there's nothing you know wrong about them at all they you know they're not bitter about it they remain friends um, they respect her decision and everything but um, as as um, we introduce these characters a ship comes by a Russian ship called the Demeter um, makes it to shore but under um, weird circumstances the crew is gone except for the captain who's tied to the wheel with rosaries and crosses and it later um, <coughs> excuse me. They read his um, in, you know, his log entries and what all the events that happened and how he loses his men and um, you know, these scary events that happened there. Lucy um, later, who has this um, bad, who has an unfortunate, um, um, who has an who has an unfortunate sleepwalker. Um, she starts um, walking out of her home at night. Only to be followed by Mina. When Mina finds her, she finds this dark, um, something dark and mysterious over on top of her. And later, um, she comes towards it. The, the, it's gone, and she's just there. And she knows two puncture marks, but she thought that Mina thought that was just when she's putting this um, scar, uh, scarf around her neck, and and that the pin just punctured her a bit. Now, over time, Mina, you know, Mina looks over Lucy. She she starts to recover from what she went through, but then later she gets weak again. And so Dr. Seward looks into her and, you know, and, and, and later invites Dr. Van Helsing, who's um, from Amsterdam. So, and, and they sort of realize, okay, she's losing, she's somehow lost blood somehow. So she, they give her a series of transfusions, first from Dr. Seward, then Van Helsing, then later Quincy Morris and Arthur Holmwood. You know, everyone sort of, you know, chips in to try and keep her alive through her loss of blood while they figure out what's wrong with her. Well, long story short, she eventually dies in the mysterious circumstances, again, through the um, journal entries from Lucy herself and all that. And Harker was eventually finds his way out of the, you know, of the Castle Dracula and is now recovering at a um, monastery for, with, with nuns. So Mina goes off to, um, and goes off and immediately tries to, 
uh, finally get married to him. She's unaware of Lucy, what's happened to Lucy when, before, you know, of what happened to her, and she dies. Um, ben Helsing starts putting things together with all this, and you know, eventually comes to conclusions that she's turned to, turned into a vampire, and carefully tries to tell the others of what has happened to her by going to her grave. He realizes that she's the one coming out of her grave and is taking these children um, to feed upon. They eventually stop her and find out that what's happened to her is in relation to um, Dracula, who who came in through to meet her with 50 boxes of herbs from his castle, and he's trying to you know spread you know go beyond his borders there and, and do whatever he. It never quite explains his exact plans. I'll get to that in a moment here. But he starts doing it on Mina, and when they find out he's involved, they go to find his um, the places where he stored the boxes, mostly Carfax Abbey. There's also another location. Um, they try to sanctify the earth so he cannot rest in these areas, and they try to stop him. And you know, he but he escapes. But in before, in before so doing, he infects Mina with vampirism to the point where not only does he drain her blood, but also forces her to feed off of him. So now she's infected with vampirism and, is probably slowly, and will slowly over time become a vampire herself until they destroy Dracula. And they're on a quest across the Europe to try and counter him you know, before he reaches to his castle and you know, to kill him and Mina will be saved. That's the short of it. And, you know, um, some and most of the adaptations of this story are inaccurate to it. You see some elements, um, but let, let me explain. Okay, say so when we usually more we're introduced to Dracula, we're usually introduced it through movies and such. The famous one being Universal's, um, you know, Dracula with Bela Lugosi. We're introduced to the characters, many of them, but you know, there's also differences in that. Of course, before Bela Lugosi's Dracula, we had Nosferatu by you know I forget the, um, it was a German production here, and there was a lot of trouble because they it's their own adaptation of Dracula without the permission of it. See, they still had to get permission from the Stoker Estates at the time. And um, so, it was, and there's a long complicated story on that. But we've seen Dracula in various forms, you know, the Hammer Horror films with the great Christopher Lee. Um, but of all the stories, I, you know, the one that is most accurate to the events of the story would be the 1992 um, or 93 version that by Bram Stoker's Dracula by Francis Ford Coppola. I grew up watching this one and I enjoyed it, but I don't, it's one of those after I read the book and seeing all the changes in there, it kind of, um, ugh, no, okay. For instance, um, the characters in the movie are not exactly in the book. The book shows the characters that were uh, nice, not only nice and proper, they were also very good friends with each other. Um, they, you know, there's nothing crude about them in their way they express themselves. They try to be considerate of one another. They try to be noble. The men who are noble and brave. The women are, are you know, are you sweet or innocent. Or, you know, perfect examples of women can be very intelligent and stuff like that. Mina Harker is um, praised for being a wonderful woman. And Jonathan Harker is a, a great to have her. So, we kind of... I mean, the thing is, when I read this book, I, you know, I wasn't, you know... they. I can't say this is a critique. Now, at least I don't think you know. I don't think of this as a bad thing here. But I see how some people would read this as like um, they keep telling the characters on how noble and brave they are and what good friendships they have, and you know, together they can take out um, Dracula and everything. And it does this so many times. I'm sure some people would look at this. God, you know, you know, don't we get it already? You know. It's, if this was written in today's, if you tried to tell the same story today, but be written differently, on you know, um, there's a thing we hear on internet uh, critics who um, say, "Hey, you're supposed to show, don't tell." And this is a novel equivalent of the, you know, that they're telling more than they're showing. They show a little, but they always keep remind, you know, they always tell each other how um, what good friends they are, and how noble each every character is, and you know how strong they are in, in trying to stop um, Dracula and all that. Where, um, but that's interesting, I find out. Um, but the thing is, um, one of the changes that I, you know, that, you know, like in the book, Lucy, who, the one who was turned to vampire first, before Mina, in this one, she is sweet and innocent and everything, and, um, you know, and she, you know, having three suitors to try and get, and she, re she regrets refusing the two, you know, risk heartbreaking them for the one she did choose. Where in, Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie adaptation by Coppola, 
she's she has a you know it's just sweet mannerisms but she's kind of a bit of a tease a lot of innuendo like he you know goes up to quincy morris says, Ooh, get, let me see your big bowie knife and all that you know you could tell you know um it's i i understand what they were going for that she's sort of tempting fate a bit eventually she does succumb to vampirism first and she pays for it but in the book she was an innocent person that really didn't deserve it in some ways that's more horrifying um if they adapted it to where it fits those lines in a way instead of turning her into an a tease for lack of better terms um it you would probably feel for her death as the characters did in the book it's things like that um the characters in the book are um you know prim, not only prim and proper for the people of their station and all that this is victorian times and all that um they show they do whatever they can to be considered to others to try and get you know what needs to be done and to explain these things where in the coppola version there you kind of see them to have certain moments of how they talk crudely or show you know, or um or being considered they're funny lines but they're definitely a change from the book to the movie and ben helsing you know um going up to morris and saying shall we come to bitch of the devil the whore darkness he isn't like that in the book at all. He was a he was a prim proper educated man trying to solve this. Um, not saying you can't have fun watching it for that, but it is a change there, and that's probably the point I really want to get at. We've seen Dracula permeate through the culture through various means, various adaptations, some more than others, mostly you know going off in their own way where it's not it's not even like the original, but. I always argue that if you are going to um, write something in the realms of horror or fantasy that takes from elements of folklore, myth, or from older sources that we derive from, you go back to the source as far back as you can, and then and if and also further back if you can. See, Dracula is not the first vampire story; far from it. Vampires have been in mythology for centuries, but this one helped popularize and um, many of the tropes we associate with vampires today. So instead of relying on um, all the Dracula movies from before, love them or hate them, you go back to the source, which is a novel, and if you go back to the mythology, and if you're a creative person who's writing a book or uh, making a movie, you use you start with this as um, far down to the roots as possible, or to the base of the stems of the branches, you know, that, and if you get a good rich dose of that ignore everything else and then build your story up from there you probably will come up with something uh, that would last a little bit be more respectful um or lack of better well maybe not necessarily that's the right term uh, but you have a more richer story that way um instead of being derivative and that's you know that's the thing and so dracula we you know him i know him we all know him but Go back to the you know, go back to the classics. I have a friend whose little daughter, you know, who's about ten years old or so, and she's reading this when I was reading it. I just got finished reading this, and I, um, throughout October, because I always wanted to read it during that time, I was trying to get this done before Halloween to be Halloween themed, but I didn't make it. I started filming this around the 11th of November, but you know what? That's okay because the last journal article was uh, November 5th. You know when the story ends and he got Dracula, so yeah, it's also appropriate that surpass October and and Dracula on the be um, around November. So I don't feel so bad now. So okay, so now is my incoherent rant of Dracula. You know, give the classic a shot. You've seen probably for many of you've read it. You you know may you know enjoy it. You're a lot. There's a lot of vampire fans would have this on the library. You know library but a lot of you familiar with dracula through all the other media derived from that and they say go straight to the source love it or hate it at least understand um uh, you know where where it came from and how this book you know and it's, all, it's also one of my small lists of books to read in the, cl uh, the classic gothics i read castle of otranto and um you know, Melmoth the Wanderer. Oh, by the way, if you think this one's a difficult read because of all that, and granted, this one is nearly 400 pages in this paperback, and the print is a touch smaller than normal and close together, so it took me quite a while to read through it. Granted, I've only read it through at work or when I'm donating plasma, but it took me a while to get through, but you can think this is going to be a hard read because it's an older book. Well, try reading Melmoth the Wanderer. It's much worse. But heck, um, 
but I'm digressing a bit. So, I, you know, um, the point is, you've got, you know, if you're interested in gothics, this is one you definitely put in your collection. But, um, but definitely just read it because it's a classic story in itself, and there's a reason why it is, and it's good to experience it for yourself. So, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.